good morning today i am going to discuss with you what is educational psychology the nature of educational psychology and the scope of educational psychology we have already learned that psychology is a subject which deals with the human mind and the behavior we try to study about the human mind and the behavior through psychology psychology has two main branches one is called as a pure psychology and another one is applied psychology educational psychology is one of the branches of applied psychology let us see what is the definition for educational psychology uh, skinner has defined educational psychology as a branch of psychology that deals with teaching and learning so teaching is concerned with the uh, teacher and the learner namely the students so this definition is very simple and it is very uh, compact is it not let us see some other definition which will describe more about what is educational psychology you can see the definition given by eap okay he says that educational psychology deals with the nature of the learning so how do we learn how do we memorize the things that is learning is it not then growth of the human personality your personality changes from day one till the end of your life is it not we are changing every day our behavior of our characters are modified due to experiences and learning is it not then the differences between the individuals we have an individual differences we are not one and the same we differ from one individual to another in different types of interest capacity ability skills everything is it not so we have various types of individual differences and the study of a person in relation to the society so how we relate you can see some of the persons they are very friendly with others some of them are very amicable some of them are not like that so a person's relation to the society can be dealt i hope this definition is very uh, brief in telling about what is educational psychology let me begin once again it deals with the nature of learning growth of human personality the differences between individuals and the study of a person in relation to the society so educational psychology helps a teacher to understand about the learners in his class in a better way okay now let us move with the scope of educational psychology what is scope when you learn something you get a benefit out of it is it not by learning educational psychology we learn about the learner the learning process how the learning situation should be in a classroom okay so there are many definitions and many things given about educational psychology i am going to discuss with one of the uh, points hc linda has given about five important components or he has said these are the boundaries or the limits of educational psychology what are they number 1 the learner the learning experiences the learning process the learning situation and finally the teacher so the learner is given very much importance in the classroom situation or any learning environment is it not we have different types of learners all the learners are not the same is it not you know you know every student is having their own interest capacity skills and their own caliber is also different so we should understand what type of learner is in my classroom then how we have to teach them you have to modify your teaching we can't teach everybody in the same way or in the similar way is it not so the next thing is the learning experiences you provide learning experience is nothing but take for example if you want to teach any uh, uh, biology or any subject if you teach them with the real life examples it becomes very easy for them is it not so the experiences or the activities that makes you on learning to be more easier that is called as a learning experiences okay then the third one is a learning process how do you learn the process the way the methods take for example you have here the maths teachers what they do when they teach any sums they first to give you an example sum they make yourself clear with the laws rules and the principle and later they give some other uh, problems based on the same type is it not likewise the learning process is very important in a classroom then what are the learning situation 
there are different types of learning situation you know you all now you miss your classrooms is it not the learning situation when somebody learns we are motivated to learn is it not in a classroom environment when the students are learning the learner of the next person when some other student learns they are also motivated i should also she is learning i should learn like that so the learning situation the calmness the environment take for example when you ask people when you learn very better they say that when i am in a calm situation when i am in a closed environment when there is a very good uh, uh, calm atmosphere so that is called as a learning situation so in a classroom a teacher to, should provide a very good learning situation to the students they should be interested to listen to your class so then your teaching becomes very easy then finally the teacher so the teachers uh, personality their interest the methods they use the way they teach the cons uh, uh, content everything is very important for a teacher so a teacher should have certain ability to teach the concepts in a better way okay so he has given these are the five areas which determine the scope of educational psychology we can say the scope are otherwise or the it is a use of educational psychology and you can see among the points i have highlighted three points what are they the learner the learning process and the learning situation because they are the important components which determines the educational psychological process okay so you can see the learner is very important the learning process is very important the learning situation is very important i hope now in today's class you are clear with what is educational psychology the scope of educational psychology thank you